Bonjour, everybody. Hi, this is Neshi Lokat. Welcome to um, the Spiritual Roundtable. And it is, it is uh, Thursday, April 18th, April. Oh my goodness, what was that? July 18th. <laughs> you know, April 18th, I think it was my, my grandmother's birthday, I think. It was either the 17th or the 18th. Weird. Weird. So welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. It is a um, kind of a rainy, rainy, thundery kind of day here. Um, and uh, so I would really appreciate it if you guys sent some good energy this way to make sure that the electricity stays on. Because when the electricity stays on, so does the internet. <laughs> so welcome. It is... Um, my last day this week for for the live stream i do the live stream sunday through uh thursday yeah and this live stream is the highlight highlight of my day why is because i get to spend time with you guys i do and we get to have a spiritual conversation about the the uh divination cards that's drawn in the morning um and we get to share um you know our lives really you know we talk about um, how the information is helpful and what we're going through and um, tips sometimes for others that would be helpful for them and uh, this is the deck that we're currently using spirit of the wheel it's a meditation deck it's by Linda Iwashina and it's uh, illustrated by Jody Bergsma I really like this deck I don't know about you guys but it has been um, it has been really really informational over this last what six weeks or so that we've been using it, and so um, yeah, Linda Iwashina, you're doing a good work. That's what I say. Yeah, I wanted to welcome all those that are in the live chat, and also those who will be watching this uh, recorded. Right? Uh, you know what I just love about the recorded shows is that we get to see them, watch them, maybe more than once. You know, maybe we sat in and watched in part of the live stream, and um, there was some, there was information in there that we wanted to go back to listen to again, and that is so nice, isn't it? But it's even better is when we can't be in the live chat. We want to, but maybe, you know, we got busy lives, right? And so maybe what you're going to do is you're watching it um, when it's most uh, convenient for you. And either way, it's good. And it's good to spend time with you. So uh, before we get too far down the road, what I'd like to do is I'd like to um, uh, send the uh, live stream over to my news feed. And I invite you to do the same, is to... Um, we were calling it sprinkling, spreading, seeding, <laughs> you know, is just basically is uh, being kind to someone else and sending something that we're interested in um, and hopefully they'd be interested in it too, right? So I'm going to send the live stream over to my news, news feed. First, going to like or either love it, either one. And then I'm going to send it over. Okay, here we go. Doesn't take long. Just a little bit of a pause. Um, I've done this so often that I have a bunch of quick keys now. And um, just letting, uh, reminding my friends that I'm I'm live streaming. Because you know sometimes we get busy and we forget, right? And I'm going to ask them to please join us. The live chat. Here we go. And um, there we there we be. It's good. There. Doesn't take much. I turned down my sound so it doesn't get too squelchy. <laughs> squelchy, squelchy. Let's see who's in the chat. Um, you know, I know that I, I date myself when whenever I share this one piece, but whenever I do the let's see who's in the chat, it always reminds me of the romper room. And for those of us that are like in our 50s and 60s, you know, we remember that as a childhood show in the mornings when the station could come in. I don't know. So we lived out in the country. We lived out in the country and we only got three channels. 
Yeah, that was in the 60s, 70s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, really. Um, yeah, three channels. And one of them, not very good. <laughs> hey, look who's here. Julie Shumway Hills here. Hello, Julie. Good to have you here. It's always good to see you in the chat. Kimberly's here. Hello, Kimberly. It's so good to have you back. It's been a while. It's good to have you in, in the, the chat from across the pondish kind of way, Scotland. Oh, and looks like uh, Stephanie's in the house. She's um, posted some stuff for us. Good thing. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you so much. And sending the hearts. Love it. Pat's here too. Hello, Pat. And look, Rochelle's here too. Oh, and Deb's with you too. Hi, Deb. Good to have you here. And Rob's, Rob's here, but he's not. In other words, he's working. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Rochelle, she says, love that show. It seems so magical. I know, I just don't have the mirror. Oh, I have one, but it's one of those compact mirrors. You know, It's, it's not quite the same, is it? I know. I know. Oh, gosh. You know, um, there was Grandpa Room. There was, um, um, what was the one with Captain Kangaroo? Was, was that, that wasn't the name of the show. Julie, show my hell, help me. What was the name of that show with Captain Kangaroo and Mr. Green Jeans? <laughs> Oh, because it was on in the morning. My, my little brother and I would watch it. Um, yeah, and Jack Lane was on like either just before it or just after it or something like that. It, that was the name of the show, Captain Kangaroo? I don't know. That doesn't sound right. Yeah, mm, okay. My favorite was the moose. <laughs> when you drop the ping pong balls. Yeah, that was my favorite. I always thought that was fun. Um, yeah, our inner child stuff, right? It's another thing is that we, um, <laughs> I didn't know that was, an, I didn't remember that was the actual name of the show, Captain Kangaroo. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Holy smokes. Oh, and in the afternoon, wasn't it Cowboy Eddie? That was here in Wisconsin. That was a Wisconsin show. Uh, it was uh, recorded out, oh, I think no, it was a live show out of Madison, our capital. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, here we go. Stephanie has it. She's got it. Please see the light of Star Nations to friends and family so they can grow with you. Star Nations social media manager. Yay. Yeah, that's the one. Oh yeah, and lamb chop. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get to see that one quite so often because it was on one of the channels that was hard to get. Yeah. So <clears throat> thanks for reminiscing with me that inner child stuff, right? Yeah, a lot of people, you know, that most of the kids that, that uh, they remember things like Sesame Street, right? And that, that was really big. Um, yeah, well, generational stuff, right? I think you guys are really gonna like the cards today. Um, it's kind of affirming, validating, and reassuring, yeah. I, that, that's how I felt this morning when I read when I went over the information again because they're all cards that we've had before. Yeah, Rob, what's Rob saying? He says the show was shot live. We still laugh about the time Mr. Green Jeans was hammered on the air. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Oh, what what was the show that had Clarabelle? I know that wasn't Captain Kangaroo, but well, there was a show that had Clarabelle. Uh, Canadian Sesame Street taught French in animations. Did it really? How cool would that have been to learn French through animation? Howdy doody. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Howdy doody and Clarabelle. Oh my gosh. Hey, those are classic, right? Those are classic. <laughs> All right, here's our first card. Wait, I'm going to turn off the, the crawler thing. Hang on. Hold the phone. Here we go. Turn that off so we can pay attention to the card. Yeah, I feel really good today. I don't. I don't know about you guys, but um, you know, 
we're, we're in Mercury retrograde and, and the shadow of the eclipse and all that. But today, today the energy feels quite different for me. I don't know if it is for you guys. It feels quite different. I feel so much more energy and um, it's much easier to focus. And see, I have my, my activated Merkaba has been permanent since 2002, something like that. And so, you know, uh, working with my Merkaba and learning about the expansion of it and, and that sort of thing. So that's, that's helpful. Um, but today feels different. It feels different. Um, and it could be because I did work on my Merkaba yesterday. <laughs> could be. Yeah. Okay. Everybody remembers Howdy Doody. Too funny. Okay. Poor Kimberly. Uh, Kimberly, I don't know what your shows were, were like as a kid. Did you grow up in Scotland? And, you know, did you have those favorite shows too, That that uh, those kids' shows? That's what we're talking about. All right. So here's the first card. The first card. I love the colors, the shades of blue that she, the Jody Bergsma uses, the illustrator. This is Mother Earth card. We've had this a, a couple times before. Right. And it's so, I mean, I love that picture with her holding a child. She's holding us and all our relatives. I love the dream catcher in the front there. See if I can get that in focus. There we go. Yeah, isn't that nice? It's all about the creative feminine force, nurturing and birth. It's the second stone in the layout of the medicine wheel. You know, and two is all about co-creation, right? Co-creation. And there it is. That's a lot. Oh, it was in focus. Okay. I really like that dream catcher there. How many people have a dream catcher in the, the uh, live stream chat? And if you're watching it by the, the recorded show, you know, just let us know if you, if you have a dream catcher and if you have it hung up in your window, in your bedroom. I used to have one in my rear view, uh, hanging on my rear view mirror in my car. Yeah. You know, when that, that word nurturing, and then you look at the picture, right? How good is that? And here's another good good question. You know, almost every day we're asking if you're grounded, right? And thank you. Thank you to Stephanie and to um, <clears throat> Cernos um, for creating the memes uh, around the grounding. How Have you grounded today? Um, and the uh, astronomy background pictures. Those are so nice. And I see them on Instagram, and it just, you know, it feels good because we're helping so many people just by posting those memes. Just a, a gentle reminder, right, to ground. And when we're grounding, we're grounding to Grandmother Earth, right? So when Grandmother Earth energy, when she replies to you, you know, in your grounding, when she replies to you, what's it feel like to you? You know, do you have a sensation? Do you um, see colors? Um do you feel like somebody's giving you a hug? You know, what does it feel like for you? Your connection to Grandmother Earth. All right. While, while you're replying to that, I'm going to take a look at the chat again, get caught up with you guys. Um, Rob says, it's very different energy day, very different, but there's a release of sorts at work, nothing to do with the rest of us. Um, maybe, but it does. It feels different. It feels... Um, it smell, feels smoother and more of a flow, right? Um, yeah. Kimberly saying, yes, yes, I did. We watched The Muppets. The Muppet Show. God, that's a good one, too. Yeah, now, now I got their, their song in my head. Thanks, Kimberly. <laughs> oh, she says, uh, Wurzel and G Gummidge was an ace, ace, too, with Aunt Sally. Oh, do they run? Do they do reruns, or is that you know they don't get to see those anymore? Because it sounds good. It sounds good. Rob says I do, and 
Michelle says she does too. Okay. So, so you feel, feel grandmother earth when you connect with her. Um, I guess what I want you, would like you to do, I'd encourage you to do is to really notice it. You know, what is it, what does it feel like for you? You don't have to share it with anybody because it's really personal. If you, you can, if you want, but it, it's pretty personal. You know, there's a lot of people, um, who see color, right? I happen to see the color and I feel her. I feel her. I feel her um, coming close to me. It's like uh, a gentle pressure. You know, it's like when somebody hugs you. I also see um, a color green um, as it comes around me, swirls around me, and I can feel it entering my in, my inside my body. Um, and so I, that's how I know that she's with me, right? And sometimes, even when I'm, I'm not connecting consciously to her, and I just turn my focus to her, my attention to her, um, I can feel that gentle pressure, that hug, and I can I can see that color green that comes with her for me. Okay, and so that's how I know that that uh, we're we're consciously connected because she's with us all the time. It's just that when we turn our consciousness to her. Okay. Uh, let's see. Rob says, um, Mercury retrograde, nothing. Those who serve heaven are beyond the influence of the stars. Oh, that's a quote, huh? Okay. I kind of believe that in a way. That's why I always say every Mercury retrograde is that I accept all of the gifts that the Mercury retrograde bring me and I release anything less than that okay. and Rob also says that does not uh, deny astrology but that is the key to free will ancient astrology was all about fate and predestination well that's true well you know they were looking they were searching they were seekers just like we are right seeking information and seeking uh, that validation um, and we're still doing that today. We're still looking for those edges, right? Uh, something um, uh, to put our beliefs inside, right? Some sort of format or form. Um, and, and some people still are still searching for that, you know, um, whether it's organized religion um, or whether it is, um, you know, the connecting to Grandmother Earth. We're all doing it somehow, the best way we can. Stephanie is saying, I spent a good time crying last night. I feel very refreshed this morning as if the whole last few weeks were washed clean. Well, good for you. You know, every once in a while, we need an ugly cry. We do. We really do. Um, when I was, I still do that. <laughs> I was going to reflect on my dad, you know, when he was when he was still with us, because um, it was pretty uh, emotionally taxied with him, and uh, at, like every other day or every third day, I'd have a really good hard cry, and then I knew I was good for at least a day or two, um, and you know, I still do that with my mom. So it's just hard, hard emotionally to to watch your parents go through stuff. And Stephanie also says, I have I have two dream catchers. One is inked over my heart behind me. Ah, and the other hangs in the hall between the bedrooms. Look, wow. That's very powerful to have it inked on you. You know, that is really cool. Huh. Yeah, the dream catchers, you know, um, they originated in, um, east of the Mississippi, the woodland, um, Indians, natives. <laughs> <laughs> just dating myself again indigenous people yeah and then it spread across turtle island and uh, now it's in every nation practically um a dream catcher and the story goes is that you can hang the dream catcher in your bedroom window or where where near you sleep because it will it acts like a filter it will keep out um the the nightmares the bad dreams and I'll let the good dreams through. Right? So it acts like a filter. All right. Rob is saying, I feel an energy that's a glowing indigo. Oh, when, when you're when you're connected consciously. 
with grandmother earth yeah you know it's i personally i think it's good for us to to recognize that um because it's very personal it's individual to us and how we sense her around us near us and so um whenever we are going through something that is uncomfortable um in one way or another, whether it's scary or um, it's, it has your anxiety kind of coming up, you know, is when you turn your attention to her and, and so you know what it's like um, when you're consciously connected to her and bring that to you, um, many, many times what it'll help you do is to um, either um, – release and let go whatever that was was bringing up those uncomfortable feelings or it will help you understand them better and you know when you what caused it what was the trigger okay. so that you're in a better in a in a better way to take in the information yeah so grandmother earth yeah so here here is what the um the author says about this card she says, um, this card asks that you open yourself to feel the complete truth of your life. You must be willing to experience the pain as well as the joyful moments to fully emerge. Reaching that magical point of renewal allows the heart to expand toward the light. Through the expression of our emotions, we are able to tap into our, our true feminine nature and appreciate our connection to all living things. We learn to properly nourish ourselves and become the caretakers that we are naturally meant to be. Open up and allow your heart room to grow. When we allow ourselves to give birth to our emotions, we learn to truly honor the creative feminine source within. Hmm. So Stephanie, you were right on on track with allowing whatever that emotion was to come up and have that good cry, right? To show our emotions in the full range of emotions. Um, as light workers, energy workers, sometimes I think that we we edit <laughs> our our emotions uh, more than we edit our thoughts. Um, and on some of that is because of the way we were raised, maybe the the um, belief systems, right? Because you got to stay strong. You can't let anybody know that you know show any weakness at all, right? I'm hearing my mom's voice in my head um, is that we monitor our emotions and only allow them out on on occasion, right? To be expressed openly, uh, maybe even publicly, right? Yeah. And what this card is saying, what Grandma, Grandmother Earth is saying is allow the expression of your emotions to feel the full range of your emotions, you know? Um, everything from the anger and the fear to the joy and the elation. And everything in between and if we can do that in the moment in the present time right even better even better because a lot of times I know that we have pretty strong emotions of things that happened in the past right that are still with us that are um, that we're carrying around with us right yeah, that we haven't released yet or haven't dealt with yet. And so it's like um, spending our emotional energy um, attached to the past, right? When it's much more healthier to express your emotions as they occur in a good way, in a healthy way, right? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, okay, great, great, great. Thank you, Stephanie, for doing the posting there about uh, what kind of card draw this is. 
appreciate that. And so here is the, the prayer for the, the Mother Earth card. It says, I call upon the energies of Mother Earth to help me to accept and express my true feminine nature. I honor all beings with the gift of motherly compassion that is innate within me. And that is for both male and female two-leggeds. Because we, we carry both the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine energies within us. And in many ways, this is asking us to, to balance those, emo those emotions through the sacred feminine. And then we're balancing things out too, right? Yeah. So when we feel safe enough to express our emotions, right? Because don't we all look at our desire for this, to be nurtured, to be cared for, to be important to someone that would hold us in this way? You know, especially when we're feeling, feeling vulnerable. Ah, and Georgie just came and sat down right on my foot. He's laying on my foot. As soon as we started talking about that. We, we all crave that nurturing. Right? Okay, and so he, here, here's another thought. This is us in our inner child, that aspect of us that yearns to be nurtured, you know, to be taken care of, right? And we can do that for ourselves. We can, we can do that. We can nurture ourselves. Nurture that aspect of us that's that inner child, right? To love ourselves the way that we always wanted our parents to love us. And some of us did experience that, right? And maybe you miss it. Maybe you miss it. And then for those of us who didn't receive that kind of uh, nurturing love, um, we have that opportunity to be able to do that for ourselves, to nurture that aspect of us that's the child, right? To love ourselves the way that we've always wanted to be loved. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so there is a good question, and it's kind of a hard one. So... Have you ever been nurtured the way that you've always desired, that you dreamt about, that you craved? As two-legged, you know, it's kind of, it's, especially in the West, <laughs> it's like, you know, we don't, we don't show those kind of emotions very readily. Right, especially adult to adult, um, it might be a bit different in our expression with the children that that are in our families that we care for that we love. Um, but what I'm, I think what I'm reaching for is that unconditional love. That unconditional love, I've only felt it really once in my life. Yeah, and that was. Um, it was during a, a prophetic dream. I was with, they call her the old woman, the great mother. Um, and when I finally returned back to her, um, looking into her eyes, you know, was the first time that I had that feeling that there was unconditional love there. There was nothing that I could have done to lessen that love that she has for me. And for, that was one of those, those turning points in my life. 
Um, and that was back in 1999. Yeah. Rob is saying, no, not, not really, no. I was nurtured very much and, and well, uh, but not in the way my souls, my souls craved. Ah. And isn't that the key, Rob? Isn't it that the key? Is that the way that our soul craves? Yeah. And Stephanie is saying, got, got to get kiddo to speech. Okay, we'll catch the replay. Thanks, Stephanie, for being with us and doing all the work in the background. I appreciate it. And say hi to Ben for me, okay? Give him a big hug. All right. So, um, yeah. This is, I think, one of my favorite cards in this deck. So maybe it's a good way to be able to, to talk about how we can um, love ourselves the way that we've always wanted to be as a child, to, to care for that inner child that way. Because when our inner child feels safe and loved, so do we. Right, because that's an aspect of ourselves. And as an adult, we become more self-confident. We become uh, more open, right? Our heart is, 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 isn't as guarded, right? Yeah, okay. So here's the second card. Second card, look who's back. Rochelle, look who came back to visit. Turtle Clan. It's all about grounding, steady progress, and solidity. Look at that. Turtle Clan. Do you know that this was the very first card in this deck that came to visit the first time we used this deck? It was Turtle Clan, and it was all about grounding that day. Yeah. So the author says, uh, do not be concerned that nothing much is happening outwardly at this time. You'll reach your goal when the time is right. So she's talking, George just moved the table. Um, she's talking about divine timing, right? Divine timing. And slowing to the turtle pace requires you to have patience and faith that the universe will, will um, provide what you need in the exact divine timing that you need it. Okay? And the pace assures that your goals are grounded and that you will, in fact, have the energy and perseverance to reach the desired end. Turtle teaches us to become centered and grounded. Centered and grounded. And in this picture, we always talk about how this particular turtle is, is moving along the ground. All four of his legs are on the ground. Completely touching grandmother earth. Right? You know, and turtle, um, is a part of the creation story. And that's how we get the name for Turtle Island for North America. The creation story goes that, uh, you know, during during the, the flooding, right? Um, that the animals were having a hard time and um, sacred man, the first man, the first person, um, they, they didn't have any place to live. They didn't have any place to live. There was so much water, there wasn't, there wasn't any ground to, to step on. And um, they're, they're catching floating debris and that kind of thing. And um, each of the animals thought that if they could dive down deep enough that they could bring back soil um, so that they could build, they could create an island, right? And each took a turn. And uh, either they, they, they died in the, in the attempt or they came back, and, but they weren't able to bring back the soil because it was too deep. Okay. And so um, the last one left, and it was a very light, 
light voice said, I'll try, I'll try. And that was muskrat. And he dove down and dove down to the deepest parts and grabbed a, a handful of soil and came up. And he made it back up. Um, he wasn't doing too well, but he made it. He made it. And so um, the turtle volunteered to carry the, the soil of Grandmother Earth from so far beneath the water um, to create the island. And so the muskrats dove and dove and dove and dove to bring back enough soil to create Turtle Island. And that That's how we have such a sacred connection to the turtle because uh, literally we are living on its back. So think about that when we when we ground to grandmother earth when we ground to grandmother earth we're really grounding to the turtle too turtle medicine that's interesting isn't it so you know when i was going through the information this morning and i saw the two cards um the first and second card and, you know and, and and how i i um and with the cards is that the second and third card um, support the message of the first, right? And so here we are, we're talking about grounding to grandmother earth and we're talking about our connection to her, our connection to her and that she provides everything for us. And so when we connect to her, no matter what we're doing, what we're healing, what projects we're working on. When we're grounded, she's a part of that co-creation. She's, we're consciously including her in that. And so no matter how fast or how slow it occurs, it occurs in divine timing. And because we're grounded to her, she provides everything, everything for it. In the physical sense. So here we are, um, starting a new project, starting a new experience. We just finished up one, right? Most of us did. Um, and we're looking toward the energy that's flowing around us to create the next life experience, which will create the life lesson that leads to the wisdom, right? Okay, so in that, we're also manifesting. And as, as uh, we know about manifesting, thanks to Ed Langen, is that we're manifesting every single day, every moment of the day, practically. Yep. And so we send our manifesting intentions by prayer out into the universe, right? And from a sacred geometry point of view, we're sending it to the sixth dimension where the platonic solids reside. And they're the building blocks of all creation. And so um, spirit moves those blocks around and they send it back to us in the spirit form. And it's up to us to ground it to the earth plane. And where are we grounding it to? We're grounding it to grandmother earth. Right. And so she gets to help us to hold that physicalness of the manifesting here to her through us. So it really is co-creation. And look, when we call on turtle, when we call on turtle medicine. It's helping us to ground it to the earth grounding it to Grandmother Earth. And notice it's a num numerology five. That's all about change and transformation. Mm -hmm. So I think we're getting prepared for the next, the next event, the next experience. Oh, I almost forgot the prayer. And the prayer for this card is through the lesson of the turtle, I move forward towards my goals with the steady, slow progress that will assure completion. 
My life is more complete when I take the time to enjoy myself. As my body is healthier and my mind clearer, I honor Turtle for opening my connection to the Earth Mother, and I am grateful for the gifts she has given me. And how is that? How is that? Hmm. So basically, Grandmother Earth is waiting for us to ground to her consciously and to ground our, our manifestations to the Earth plane so she can help us, so she can help us co-create that, right? So what is it? What is it on the horizon for you? You know, uh, many of us finished up this last life lesson. We went through um, the integration, pulling together all of the experience and understanding it as best we can and, and recognizing what we just learned, what wisdom we just gained. Right. And then we take that wisdom and we had apply it to our lives. It's sharing our wisdom. It's the gift that was given to us. We just finished that up. Many of us did. And so the next piece is waiting out there on the horizon. Our next adventure. And if we take into consideration what Spirit told us weeks ago about how we can shift our consciousness around what a life lesson is and, and experience it from a different perspective. That if we, can, if we can change our mind and our thoughts about how we perceive a life lesson, rather than having it something horrible happening to us, that it's a gift for us. Rather than being a victim of it, we're being a creator. It's a different way of looking at our life lessons. And we were told time and time again, it's a change, it's a shift in consciousness. That if we can bring that shift in and how we perceive our life lessons, it literally is a new way of being. And rather than looking at them as um, to suffer through it, the pain, emotional and mental pain of it, is to look at it more of a, as the adventure and that we are on a quest. that we're on a quest and that we focus more on the gaining of the wisdom than we do of the, the emotional pain that, that what caused it, what caused it. You know, when we tell the story over and over and over again to anybody who will listen, right? Yeah. Oh, Rochelle had to leave too. Okay. Uh, Got to go for a walk. Me is, aw. Okay. Well, it's better to keep it limber. That's for sure. And a good and a walk is probably really good for you. So thanks for sharing, Rochelle. If you watch the replay. Okay, so here's the third card. Third card, experience. It's a spirit path of the West. It's all about letting go, movement forward, and reflection. It's the thirty-eighth card in the creation of the medicine wheel, which means it's an 11. Do you know what that means? That we are mastering, we're looking to, to master um, the, the physical plane, our physicalness here, the physical world. That's what this journey, this spirit journey is all about all the wisdom that we're gaining 
so that when it's our time to go back into spirit completely, is that we take all of that wisdom with us, right? And so that um, it's an accumula cumu accumulation um, of the very first physical life we ever had to this present one. Right. Yeah, I think it's pretty exciting. All right, so here's the experience. And this is another one of my favorite images. I love I that I don't know if that's a fox or if that's a wolf. To me it feels like a wolf. It's her allies that are around her. Right? Her allies. I'm trying to see what that is on her shoulder up near her ear. I can get the camera to focus. Let's see if I bring it in and out. There we go. It's an orb of some sort. It's got, looks like a face on it. It's another ally, but I can't try quite figure out what kind of ally it is. But she's surrounded with her spirit helpers. So she's not she's not on her own. She's not all alone. She's surrounded by help. Right? And that's one of the things that I think that we have to remember is that we're never alone. We're never alone. That our spiritual team is around us all the time, all the time. And no matter what time of day or night that we need assistance with something, all we have to do is ask. Right? They can't. They can't um, have the experience for us. They can't do the work for us, but they certainly can um, send us resources. Re you know, they can send us um, assistance, right? But we have to ask for it. We still have to do the work. We still have to do the work, but we have help in it when we ask for it. And I know that many of us are reluctant to not just ask for help, but to accept help. Even from our spiritual team, you know, how many times have we, are we shown something and because we don't want to look at it, we'll ignore it. And yet they're, they do it over and over and over again until, until we understand their message. Boy, are they patient with us or what? I think that we, if we have gratitude lists going, I think we have to add that one to it. <laughs> that our, my spiritual team is really patient with me. Rob said, it's a nice one. The picture? Yeah, I like it too. I do. I think that would make a really good poster, don't you think? I'm going to see if they sell this, the artwork, as posters. I'd like to get that one. That one and the Grandmother Earth one, too. Um, and so the experience, you know, I it's kind of like our spiritual team must be kind of like when you're a parent um, or you're um, caregiving a, a child, right? And as that child grows and learns and you know, I know a lot of parents, I'm not a parent, but I, I watch it, I've seen it, um, witnessing it, is that parents are very concerned and worried for their children a lot of the time, right? That they have what they need, that they're safe, um, you know, they worry about them having a bad experience and having to go through something that is uncomfortable and scary. Right. Um, 
and they don't want to do want them to have to go through it. So a lot of parents will do whatever it takes to make sure that their child doesn't go doesn't have anything bad happen to them. And I put it in air quotes because I'm not talking about having car accidents and that sort of thing, you know. Um, is that anything that would cause them discomfort? And I can't tell you how many times, how many times I've had moms in um, in my classes or when I was doing soul clearings um, that they would want to have something done for their child. They're usually their adult children. And when I would explain to them is that I can't really do that because um, I don't have their permission. You know, it's like, but you have my permission. It's like, you no, know, because if we do this, then we're interfering with their, their soul growth, with their life experience. And that's like trespassing. And so, you know, um, in a kind way, declining um, doing that kind of work. Because it's kind of like manipulation, you know, and so it must be that way. I I think that if our if our spiritual team were more earthbound, they would have problems with that for to let us go, right? To let us go. It's a good thing they're in spirit <laughs> because they can't do the work for us. That reminds me of. Um, of a line in a movie. Um, it's with Diane Keaton and what was it called? Because I Said So. I think that's the name of it, Because I Said So. And uh, she, she was a single parent and she raised three three daughters to adulthood, two, two of which were married and the, the youngest one was dating and, and she was really uh, concerned about the youngest one that was dating um, and trying to control a lot of stuff with her daughter. And and so, and her daughter finally had enough and said, enough, enough already. You know, and Diane Keaton's famous line in that movie to me, for me, is what am I supposed to do? Um, I, I raised you and I cared for you. I taught you how to walk and how to speak and how to I taught you. And so now when you're walking toward a cliff, I'm not supposed to say anything. <laughs> I'm not supposed to do anything about it. I'm just supposed to watch you walk off a cliff. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes when the, the people that we love are having their own life experiences, sometimes it's hard to let go right? Sometimes it's hard to let go of them and not try to control the different facets of it. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be somebody that is uh, part of your family, like a child or um, a spouse or anything like that, you know? It could be, you know, if you're a spiritual teacher, it, it could be one of your students, right? You give them the, the information and you, you, you hope for the best that, that when they get to the application part, um, that they're going to be able to do it and have a good experience with it because we can't, we can't create it for them and we can't do it for them. We have to let them go. <laughs> experience. In that experience, it's part of the life lesson, right? That life experience. As they move through the life experience, just like us, <laughs> just like us, when we have a life lesson that we're doing and we're experiencing it, knowing consciously that, you know, that on the other side of all this is the wisdom. And so that's my goal. 
I, I, I'm meant to learn this life lesson and experience what's going on so that I can, I can gain the wisdom. They're going through the same thing. Yeah. Kind of hard though to, to let go of some people and allow them to have that experience. But here's a question for you guys about your personal experience. Do you, did you, have you, have you ever experienced yourself someone who is close to you trying to mitigate, trying to make things better for you so you don't have to experience it, right? We'll call it interference. Running interference for you. In many ways, it's it's because they care about you and they love you, right? But a lot of times, it 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 actually kind of gets in the way, and you have to go back and redo it or experience it in a different way, right? And prolongs it sometimes. Yikes. Kimberly, Kimberly is saying, just wanted to share a film I watched last night. It was about climate change and doomsday. However, the amazing message that came through was that Spirit brought bought a certain group of people together to a temple in Mexico. They just knew they had to travel. Um, just knew they had to travel to the temple for an important reason. And it was their baby was born with everyone who could help things go smoothly. Ah. And the moral of the story, right? Moral of the story. They had to go through it. They knew they had to be there for a certain reason. And they had to go through the experience. I would imagine that there were parts of it that wasn't easy. Right? Okay. Looking at the time. So I'm going to show you all three cards. So you might want to call your spiritual team to you and ask them for assistance in taking in the information, the message, the essence of the cards that's meant for you. And to take it in in an optimal way so you get everything that you need from it, okay? Take a big deep breath in and on the exhale, you're taking in the information. All right, so you can get them separated here. There we go. Whatever is meant for you and how Grandmother Earth nurtures you, provides for you, loves you, right? and how we ground to her, we ground our manifestations to her, as we can call on turtle medicine to even help us to do that, that we're still moving forward in our spiritual growth, Sometimes the, the, the path is rather slower, a slower pace than we would like, but it all happens in divine timing. Preparing us for our next experience and that we're never alone. We have our spirit allies with us, our spiritual team assisting us. All we have to do is ask. They can't do the work for us. We're the ones that are in the, the physical body to have the experience. Gaining the wisdom from it all. So my feeling is that we're, we're getting prepared for the next, the next life lesson, the ne le next leg in the journey, the next adventure. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's why the energy feels different today. Maybe it does. Well, we're at the top of the hour. And you know, 
anything that resonated with you today from our conversation, yeah, I suggest that you embrace it and watch and see how the energy unfolds around you today and where this information can be helpful. Um, and if it didn't resonate, don't worry about it. It's okay. We'll just be back here on Sunday, Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. and we'll do another card draw. And maybe that one will resonate with you. Or perhaps you're the messenger and you get to um, maybe send the live stream recorded show link over to maybe a friend um, who you think may enjoy the conversation or has been looking for this kind of conversation. And that's all you have to do, right? Yeah. So we have one more show for you guys this week, and that's at um, 8 p.m. Eastern time tonight. That Spiritual Mysteries of Life with Connie Shearwater. She's one of our elders here at Star Nations, and I get to produce her show. And I tell you, I am always ready for to take notes. Why? Because there's always a gold nugget of wisdom coming from Connie. And, uh, and I don't know, she might do channeling tonight. I don't know. Um, we'll find out once the show starts. So if you can join us tonight, that would be great to see you guys in the, in the live chat at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And just a, a short thing here. Um, I was looking at the calendar this morning and realizing that it is a month, a month before we do the drum making workshop here at Star Nations Academy here in Toma. And um, so if you're interested in making, creating your own sacred drum, um, every drum has a spirit within it, and uh, it truly is alchemy. It truly is alchemy. You are a co-creator in, in uh, birthing a uh, sacred drum. If you're interested in that, you just visit us over at Star Nations um, Organization's website, and uh, that's uh, starnations.org. And you can take a look at the details there if you're interested. I'm going to be ordering the hides um, come probably Saturday or Sunday. And oh, I got to do it. I'm sorry, got to do it Monday. Um, so if you're interested, I'll make sure that we have enough hides here to select from. So with that, with that, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. And we'll see you back here on Sunday at 3 p.m. for Spiritual Roundtable. Bamamina, that's Potawatomi for until we see each other again. Love you guys. <laughs>